what is going on guys it's the budget base head welcome back to the channel right now what you guys are looking at is a 3d graph of the tang bang tower that i introduced to you guys some time ago as you guys who have been following the channel knows that i have been having some issues with this sealed chamber right here that i constructed for the tower i don't feel as though it's putting out um as much as it should and it's no fault at all of the driver itself if you guys want to catch up on that and learn a little bit more about what it is i'm talking about please go back and check my archives go to my channel and look for the tang bang tower i've created a playlist specifically for this but for those who've been following this i'm going to be moving forward uh with explaining exactly how i went about porting this uh first of all thanks for all you guys who gave um, you know different tips and innovative thinking on how I could do this and this video here is pretty much the reveal of how I actually went about doing that and what method I actually chose okay so the issue was this sealed chamber I want to get it ported uh, just to kind of like go over some things and kind of get caught up to speed this is a quad chamber tower you got two sealed portions one for the full for the full range driver uh, another for the mid base driver You have two intra chambers right here for the subwoofer driver This is actually a six order base reflex meaning that it actually has two inner chambers um, To complement the subwoofer you have one that is tuned to actually 30 Hertz And then you have one that is tuned to 60 Hertz to kind of like giving an extended um, extended base res response so moving on, what I wanted to do with this tower was actually port this portion right here. And in order to do that, you're going to have to remove this top portion of the uh, tower and pretty much just separate it right here at the sealed chamber and the ported chamber. Meaning that the ceiling of this ported chamber down here, the subwoofer chamber, uh, will go una unaffected but you do want to remove this. So the ceiling will now become the top portion of this right here, whereas you will remove this upper chamber right here and reveal the, um, and, and leave this as a, an open bottom. And I'll show you guys exactly what it is that I'm talking about. By lifting this upward, this is exactly what I would have to do. Cut this thing off and reveal this right here and just give it an open space. So why would I do that? Why would I have to do that? We're well, moving onward. You guys will see that I would have to create or construct this adapter right here. This adapter piece is going to be the star of the whole construction process of porting this. Uh, if you guys were to take a look at this, you would see that there's an opening right here at the top of this piece. And this opening is not tuned to anything. It's just big enough to allow enough airflow into that that piece and so that it can exit right here at this half inch port that I created this portion right here is actually the exact length needed to tune this port to 80 Hertz and that's what I was looking for so in a nutshell what you would be looking at is the top portion again the bottom portion pretty much sandwiching sandwiching this adaptive piece right here and what this would look like as a finished product is this is this right here it will pretty much extend the height of it about an inch or so so you have three quarter inch MDF on either side and the rear to construct this ring here and you have another half inch MDF piece right here that would actually serve as the port why half inch because this is an inch tall and that would leave me a perfect half inch um, height right here and that's exactly what it is that I was looking for and um, yeah I want you guys to stay tuned for the actual construction of this I will bring you guys along with uh, with me on the table saw and show you exactly how I uh, get this thing cut um, remove this piece here how I construct it the uh, adapter the port adapter here and how I actually assembled everything so right here what you guys are seeing is me just cutting off my test leads right here you want this as clean as possible when you're running it across the table saw you don't want anything to get jammed or stuck uh, that, that'll cause mayhem 
on a table saw. Uh, right here, what you're looking at is my Ryobi portable saw. I get things measured so I can see exactly um, how to set my table saw and what depth to, uh, to start to cut at. So right here, you see me carefully just uh, making sure that I slide uh, the box securely enough. Uh, I am gonna make me a different jig to get a little bit more surface area covered, but this little jig, it, it came with the table saw and it served its purpose quite well. And now you guys can see, like you don't want uh, any glue or anything stuck to the box as you roll this thing across it because you want that to be as smooth as possible. So right now, I'm getting things separated, let the saw turn off, and I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly what this looked like and a slight mistake that I made when actually cutting this thing. So it's, it's off. Right now, I'm gonna to try to clean things up a bit because what you guys are not seeing right here is, is there is about an eighth of an inch um, of, a, of a ridge right here that I have to remove. There's too much material left. I didn't cut it as accurately as I thought I did and I'm pretty much just giving you guys a, uh, an, a view of that. In order to do that, I'm gonna be using a uh, palm sander, a planer. It's an electric palm, palm plane, planer. And um, it's gonna make short work of this. I could have used sand, sand the, uh, the, the sander that I have, but it just would have eaten through too much of my sandpaper. So I said, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna get the planer and just make quick work of it. And as you guys can see, this is a very messy, messy job. Um, if you're gonna be doing a job like this, I would highly advise for you guys to have uh, proper dust mask and, and eyewear because this stuff can get everywhere in MDF. It's pretty much it's just a bunch of uh, sawdust and glue. You don't want that stuff in your lungs. Right here, what I'm doing, I'm gonna put a 40 grit sandpaper uh, on my orbiter sander, and I'm gonna be uh, just smoothing things out enough so that when I do attach my uh, adapter, that it does have a smooth surface to, uh, to work with, and that everything will get uh, meshed up pretty good. You wanted all this to mate well. Uh, and even though, you know, the, 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 the planer that I just used did leave some imperfections in the wood, which is I'm going to give you guys a close up in a minute, uh, that is okay. I had one brad nail exposed um, right here. I took that out. I didn't show you guys that. I thought that was a bit of a waste of camera. So this is pretty much what it would look like, um, like you've seen in a 3D model. You just remove that piece and you got another... And I'm just showing you guys right there that it is half inch MDF. The whole plate, the whole face of this is I'm going to be uh, constructing a beauty panel later on of half inch MDF, giving a total of one inch MDF. Right here, I'm, I'm pretty much just showing you the pieces that you've seen in the 3D model. This is actual wood now um, that that I'm in, that I'm going to be using to construct it. And for some reason, I didn't I didn't know where I put my brad nailer at. I got a, I got a brad nailer uh, that I use an air gun. Uh, but I could not for the life of me locate that thing. So everything had to go uh, Go together with just glue. So it's kind of risky doing an, an, a project This is a repair project or a restoration Project and you you, you typically want to use those brad nails or some type of screws to secure things But uh, but when in doubt or when you don't have it, you know You, you, you have no other choice but to use pressure and glue is, is much stronger than using screws, in my opinion, or brad. To be honest with you, brad nails are just another type of clamping uh, mechanism, To just to be honest with you. Uh, it's the glue that really does all the work. Uh, anybody that's been in this, you know, doing woodwork for a while would pretty much tell you the same thing. But for everyone that, then again, you know, for every, you know, carpenter that tells you, hey, you only need the glue, you probably have another one that tells you that, you know, it's still best to reinforce with screws or whatever. But in this case, I'm just gonna use glue uh, because I didn't have, I had other choices, but they wasn't gonna be as quick enough for me. I wanted to get this done. And as you guys can see, I'm putting as much glue on this thing as possible. And the reason for that is because you don't have the reassurance of the brad. So right now I'm gonna take the, uh, the chamber, uh, the, the previously sealed chamber, and putting it on top of the adapter. And what I'm looking for at this point is pressure. So I got about 70 pounds of weight and I wanna see bleed through. And as you guys can see, you see a whole lot of squeeze out and that's a good sign. You want that right there, what you're looking at on screen right now, because that ensures you that what you did worked. 
and I let everything dry and I did clean up a bit and I wiped it down a bit before before I let it uh, completely cure and as you guys can see right now it's looking looking pretty good here everything seems to be gelled together quite well <clears throat> and I did use the weights here and the weights are serving their purpose so I'm going to be removing those in a minute but not before I give you guys a close-up of this and there's a reason why I'm actually giving you guys this close-up right here and I'm going to explain this a little bit later but just know that uh, it was very important to get as much glue as possible and even with the amount of glue that you guys seen you still see that there are cracks and crevices here um, but that's going to be explained in a later piece as to why that is and if you guys remember when i used the planer i was kind of you know not as uh smooth with it as i i could be and those edges that you see curved down or exposed right there is because of that and also because of the sanding when you're not as careful your edges will get slightly rounded over and that's the effect of it what you guys seeing now but that will be getting uh, caulked later on. I will caulk the complete, completely caulk the outside of this in order to, uh, well now I shouldn't say completely caulk the outside of it, but I will be filling those, uh, those ridges and valleys and small holes in there with caulk. So all this will be smoothed out for either paint or carpeting later on. So no worries in that regard. So right now, what I want you guys to know, I'm gonna give you a quick tip that I use to finding holes in my box. It's pretty bright, but it doesn't have to be an LED flashlight. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, but I did notice that when I got closer to my seams here, it seems as though this thing is gonna leak like crazy. Right, because you can see like the crevices along that, those those edges right there. But um, to ensure a airtight fit, I always I'm gonna caulk the inside anyway. That's the best way of doing it is to caulk it. But I always take this flashlight and shine it on the inside of the cabinet. <clears throat> see, right now I got I got lights hanging here. I got lights everywhere so that you guys can see better on the inside of the house. You know, um, when I'm outside, I don't need these lights, but it's bright. I would turn these lights off, get the room dark as I can get it. Then I would use this flashlight like this. I would put it like inside the cabin, right? And I would shine it along the edges to see if I can, you know, see any light coming through the crevices and um i do have one bad spot on here but it's it's not even nothing that bad because the glue itself has sealed from the inside but because the glue is translucent you're still seeing light through it but the cabin is still going to get caulked but for you guys you know just wondering you know another way of ensuring that your cabin is is airtight that is one way to ensure that by taking the flashlight shining it on the inside and see if you can see the light through the through the outside of it and this one here test out i only got like i got like 98 percent coverage on this and like i said earlier i did run out of um i don't know where the hell i put my glue my uh my my bread my bread gun so i had to got like just rush it and do it with pressure just put my weights on top of it and these weights ensured a tight fit and it it works so far it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do so i'm not tripping on that but just know that this is just a little tip i want to give you guys and that's pretty much it in a nutshell guys um what you guys are looking at right now is the the finished product of that as far as inserting the uh port adapter I am going to be moving forward uh, with another video to test this, not in this video, I don't want this video that long, um, but the testing of this um, is going to be coming up next. Hope you guys stick around, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see exactly what this thing is going to sound like. Um, got some more caulking to do for the outside and the inside, 
And yeah, I hope you guys stick around. This is where I'm at so far. So far, so good. <laughs>